The California Nebula is an emission nebula in Perseus. I can't believe I haven't actually done a video on this channel about it before. It's a really great target. It's about a thousand light years away from Earth, from my backyard. When it gets dark out, it'll be right there in a really great spot. I'd like you to guess what I'm gonna shoot tonight. These seasonal questions, they get me every time. You've been talking about it. I feel like it's all you've been talking about lately is this nebula. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, pick one. Have you shot it before? Yes. Have you shot it recently? Kind of recently, and I'm going to improve on it. Lobster claw? No. California? Yeah. I got it? Yeah, California nebula. Oh. Good one. NGC... 31? <laughs> 1499. I think, I have, I think I have M31 in my head. So these are Rudy's pajamas that Ashley ordered, space themed, obviously, and we got matching pairs, right? Wait, you gotta see them on. Rudy, come on, sit. Hold on. Here you go. <laughs> One paw. Wow, Rudy, look at you, buddy. Who is so Looking amazing. good. I'm going a little stir crazy. It's been cloudy and snowy for the last week or so. I haven't been out imaging, uh, but tonight looks like it's gonna be kind of okay, kind of hazy, bad transparency for a few hours, but I don't care. I'm setting up no matter what. Uh, I've got a project I'm wanting to work on some more and I think I'm gonna go for it. I'm curious to know what you guys think the weather forecast has to be before you'll actually set up for a night of imaging. I guess it depends on how desperate you are. Well, our giant tree has lost all its leaves and it's opened up a lot more sky, to be honest. I've also scheduled a tree trimming company to cut off some of the biggest branches on the tree too, to open up even more sky. I've been waiting for about two months for them to come, but it's better that they come now that the leaves are gone and I can really pick and choose which branches I want to get rid of. We like the tree and the privacy. I just want to open up some more sky. Tonight is all about the California Nebula in the constellation Perseus. It is an emission nebula about 1,000 light years away from Earth, and it is big, it is beautiful, it's in the shape of the US state of California, and when you see it in an image, it is unmistakable, it's just a really beautiful deep sky target. Unlike the Pleiades star cluster that I shot in the last video in the nearby Taurus, you're gonna need a modified camera for astrophotography to really do this object justice. It's not a broadband, broad spectrum target. It really punches in that 656 nanometer hydrogen alpha wavelength. So you'll want to get a dedicated astronomy camera or a modified DSLR. I remember in the early days taking pictures of the California Nebula with my stock DSLR camera and I just piled on hours of exposure time, hoping to make up for that lack of signal in that specific bandpass, and it just wouldn't work. I couldn't pull out that beautiful hydrogen nebula of the California Nebula out of the image with a stock camera. So I wouldn't suggest doing that. Use a modified camera or dedicated astronomy camera. It's a very large target too. You really need a wide field of view to capture the entire thing in a single frame. So I'm shooting it tonight with the Raptor 61 at 275 millimeters, big wide field of view and a full frame camera. And even with that combo, if I don't frame it up right, the nebula will spill over the edges. It is just that huge. So hopefully these clouds take off and I can add to my existing data on the California Nebula and create an even better picture. My best version of the California Nebula yet. So not looking good right now, but uh, hopefully these clouds just kind of take off.
Here's a look at the imaging setup here. I've got the Raptor 61 refractor with a 50 millimeter guide scope on top, the ASI 120 guide camera, and then my Canon EOS RA camera at the back there. We're all riding on the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. So nice little auto guided setup here, wide field, deep sky. It's also very frosty out here tonight, so I've got dew heater bands on both the primary imaging telescope and the guide scope. And as for the filter, slotted into the filter slot there is the Radiant Triad Ultra. We do have that moonlight to deal with, and this is a very punchy hydrogen nebula target, so that filter works really great on targets like this. Believe it or not, one of the most common questions I get is what headlamp am I using out here in the dark? I'm constantly wearing these red headlamps and people want to know the exact one. I've never had a great answer until now. I've been wearing these headlamps for about 10 years and this one that I got recently, I bought it in a retail store here in Canada, but it's available on Amazon. So I just want to share it with you guys. It is called the Coast HL4 145 Lumen Dual Color LED Headlamp. And I'll put a link in the description. It's got a separate button for the red headlamp, so you never actually have to turn on that white headlamp if you don't want, but it's there when you need it, nice and bright. And the most important thing is that it's very directional. So I'd be comfortable wearing this to a star party because when I have that red headlamp on, I can point it straight down if I want, just at what I need to see, quickly turn it off. This thing was designed for hard hats. It's the AAA batteries in the back, three of them, very secure on my head, and that individual button for red and white headlight lights. You could put them both on together if you want, but it's that the fact that you can turn them on separately and it's very directional. It's like a, uh, like a miner's helmet kind of light, but it's the best headlamp I've ever used for astronomy. And there's a link in the description and you can thank me later. The skies aren't great, but you wouldn't know it looking at my sub exposures on the California Nebula. So on the screen here are five minute exposures at ISO 3200 with that Canon EOS RA and the Raptor 61. If you can see it on the screen there, the California Nebula is right in the middle. I've got it lengthwise to capture the full nebula. So I'm gonna combine this data with my existing stuff to create the best image of the California Nebula yet. We're up to 19 exposures now, 19 five minute exposures on the California Nebula. Things are running great. The skies don't look really that good out there, but for some reason, these duo narrow band, or in this case, quad band narrow band filters seem to cut through the clouds a little bit when you're really isolating those specific gases. But we'll see what the data, the final data turns out like. <laughs> 